let's talk about DocuSign. So you were founded in 2003 and you're based in San Francisco. Um, effectively, you're a global provider for cloud-based um, software. Um, you've got a million plus customers, um, more than a billion people have used DocuSign today. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for all of that, because I can also hear the joy and love that you have in using the product yourself as a customer. And I think, let me just start there. It's a loved brand. Um, and what makes DocuSign special, personally, I think is that it's, it's present in moments that are meaningful for people. And people are grateful for the service because it it doesn't take away from the moment. It accelerates and supports that moment. And that moment could be, oh, you're getting a loan for a house, or it's the moment where you're offering a, you know, it's a, a new offer letter for a job, or it's a moment you're about to purchase a car, or you're, it's, you're renting something, or it's life moments too. It could be you're adopting a child or you're giving birth, you, you're sign. It's, it's present at significant moments, both in business and in life. And it's at the intersection of both business to consumer as well as business to business. Um, and I think that is just a testament to the, to the simplicity of the service and it's easy to use. And it just, for me is a no brainer. And for those that have used it, it seems obvious, but uh, in spite of that, there's still a lot of people on the planet that have not yet used it. Um, so I think that's the first piece. Um, the second piece was I was fortunate enough to, while I was working at IBM, actually be on the board of directors of DocuSign and was uh, part of the board as it transitioned to going public. And at the time, it was quite small. So it's really grown at an accelerated rate over the last uh, five years. And during its time, we are now positioning it to do more than just e-signature, to really handle multiple steps of the agreement process, including like, how do you generate an agreement? How do you negotiate an agreement digitally? How do you verify an identity in a more modern way? Okay, let's say once you have your agreements, can you search all of them easily? It's really hard to do. And then what if you wanted to search in a contract, not just around all the contracts and across all the contracts? So the opportunity to now apply AI to this bigger corpus to understand these patterns and connections and accelerate businesses and industries and entire ecosystems um, was really exciting. And then my responsibilities more specifically is to lead what's called our product and technology um, organization, which also includes uh, cu global customer support, product design, product management, engineering, our global ecosystem of partners, uh, and all of our CISO functions, which is our chief information security office side. And what is the split between, you know, consumers, um, your, you know, ev everyday person using it to get their new job and to sign up, oh, you know, buy yeah. their new oh, great, great question. Actually, majority of our um, customers are business uh, payers. So when we say we have 1.4 million paying customers, they're mom and pop shops to small, medium businesses. Um, the consumer often is not the one actually paying for the service. The consumer often is the signer. So what we what we end up actually um, driving in terms of the way in which the service is purchased is the the companies, the small medium businesses, as well as the large corporations, um, are actually the customers, and then they're actually creating uh, the documents to be able to send to the consumer. So majority of our revenue basis is business. Yeah, and uh, mum and pop like it when the business pay for it, and they get the benefit, right? <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but it also makes businesses more efficient, doesn't it? And 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 part of the success, I think, um, DocuSign has really evolved in that time since um well you you've got your big anniversary, of course, because it's 20 years, isn't it? 20 since years. It's um, a big change. It's a big change, you know, what you how you've innovated from you know launch to, to now. So um how how is the next, you know. Um, decade going to 20 years going to turn out what what are the innovations that DocuSign is is working on now well I think some of the things that we even touched upon so applying 
generative AI to the world of agreements, <clears throat> which includes things like summarizing uh, an agreement, pulling out the most salient points in an agreement, but also interacting with an agreement. So imagine you doing question and answer with an agreement. Can you explain this section in less complicated terms? What if I wanted to make an edit to this section? Can you recommend an edit that's more simplified? Or I wanna change the terms. I'd like to actually imagine if you're in an enterprise and you have your own clause libraries, right? What, what are agreements, parties, date, terms, conditions, clauses? But now imagine you have your own clause library. You can choose and pick which clauses are standard clauses versus those are non-standard clauses in an agreement that you're willing to have with a, a different party. Um, now imagine the world of identity and trust. Like, do I trust the parties I'm about to enter into an agreement with? So we're part of and an next generation of verifying those identities. A new offering that we will be coming out with is actually the ability to persist an ID in a wallet, a digital wallet. So oh. that is something that is in our roadmap. We are also doing what we call next generation of, of out of the box extractions of AI um, that are faster. So we, there's there's a lot here that I think we can um, innovate on, and I'm excited that the team is. Um, accelerating the the roadmap. Uh, we just had our customer facing momentum events, and we've got even more um, coming very quickly in the new year. It's exciting. How did you celebrate your twentieth anniversary? Oh, uh, we had a party. We had a I, I think globally distributed party around the world. We have multiple locations. We had um, for the DocuSign party. We had a uh, uh, anniversary shirts and vests and swag for all of our employees. And then obviously cakes and cookies and decorations. So it's it's been fun. Um, I think one of the biggest uh, evolutions that will have to happen is not just tech, but it's actually policy and legislation by country and province and district and region. And that's one of the things that I think has been gated is um, in terms of the advancement of, of adoption of digital technologies, such like such as DocuSign, is the different regulatory stands by country and geography of types of documents that require electronic signature and require more advanced kind of verification of identity. So those are the areas that I think um, will need to advance as fast as the tech advances. Been talking about women in tech, how we get more women in tech. What, what, why, given that you know more women are going through university now than ever before, why is this? There's this gender um, imbalance uh, when it comes to the number of women in STEM, and what can we do about it? Boy, it's been a lifelong passion and work. Um, it's also one of the reasons why I'm on the board of AnitaB.org. Anita uh, Borg Institute is the largest nonprofit for women in STEM. It also is the primary sponsor for Grace Hopper Celebration, which is the annual largest conference for women in STEM. We just hosted Grace Hopper uh, Conference just two weeks ago, and 30,000 women showed up um, between the ages of 18 and well over 60, studying, training, and for job placements and career advancement. So when I think about even that, Anita B, over the course of the last 10 years, has grown the very first conference uh, for Grace Hopper had less than 5,000 women. And over the course of the last 10 years, it's grown annually to over 30,000. And we're connecting and placing women in jobs in tech. That's piece one, is part one, meaning um, the forums, the nonprofit organizations, the broader community. I think the second piece that I've observed consistently, both at DocuSign and then at IBM, and there was a research study that I helped um, sponsor when I was the chair at IBM was those companies that have a strategy around diversity and and strategy for advancement of women actually progress faster, not only around those important metrics, but around the business, business metrics of um, revenue acceleration, brand uplift, storytelling, employee engagement. And it, it's 
it's one of those things that I think, you know, every year the world is getting a little bit better, but we're still far from where we should be, is my sense. And are you KPI'd for um, uh, for uh, diversity and inclusiveness? Is that something that's standard at, at um, DocuSign? Is that, a, you know, does that make a difference? It does make a difference. And we have this past year um, for this year actually put a uh, diversity metric um, for the leadership team at DocuSign. Because I do think that that is one way forward, you know, that, um, you know, that, that that it's on people's mind, you know, not just because it's the right thing to do, um, but it's also going to have a benefit for them. Definitely. I believe that different companies around the world, some have published that and some have not, but it is another data, another data point, which is to start with, you know, benchmarking yourself as a yeah. company organization or institution. Um, so you understand kind of how to improve from where you are. Yeah, I think the other point is that tech is an exciting place to work. It's also very well paid. Um, it also has the benefit of being very flexible, um, which for a lot of women um, and people of diverse backgrounds and you know generally the general public uh, um, want and desire. Um, so that makes it a more compelling way to go. But if you think about DocuSign, it is the ultimate um, company Distract, um, disrupt a company. You know, there was, you know, before digital, we didn't have the ability to have a DocuSign. Um, and there'll be more companies that come about and positions within those companies that will come about. So it's only going to expand. So, um, you know, even jobs that you create would never have been able to have been created in, in the past. Oh, 100%. 100% agree with what you just said, which is for the advancements in technology every year, there will be new types of jobs and new skills required for those jobs. A simple test I give to everyone. I am pretty sure in calendar year 2022, most people had no idea what ChatGPT was, much less uh, OpenAI. And it's because it's only as Microsoft really... Um, and OpenAI and Azure came out with these capabilities, it became everyday language it, by business people and everyday consumers, not just tech individuals. So when you look at even the advancement in the last year, much less three years, it's so far more than what was available five years ago. So there's there's this unique value to skills evolution and training and work that will continue to evolve. One of the topics I'm discussing at um, South by Southwest is unconscious bias and AI, as well as the you can't be what you can't see. And um, I um, uh, interviewed someone about AI and unconscious bias who is developing trust architects in AI. Mm -hmm. well, that's a job that's never existed before. So not only is, you know, like ChatGPT new to most people and obviously the, the big tech companies are competing to come out with the best AI platforms now, um, hopefully not too fast so that they're, you know, that they're not too rushed in their capabilities. <laughs> uh, but, but there are new jobs to go with that. You know, who are those people who are correcting the, um, the, in, the, 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 the areas that are not um, up to speed. Mm -hmm. I think the roles around trust, data privacy, privacy, I, governance, I, they're emerging. You know, yeah. it's, it's being it's being written as we're we're developing some of these uh, capabilities in the industry. So there will be many more roles. That's right. I mean, one of the women I'm. I'm talking on a panel with is Dr. Katrina Wallace, who is um, set up the Responsible Metaverse organization here in mm. Australia. Mm -hmm. And that's a very new organization. And it's, it is about how do we um, regulate um, AI. So um, it's been wonderful any speaking to you. Um, thank you for sharing your amazing story. Um, and uh and I've really enjoyed it, and I wish you and um, uh, and all the work that you're doing at DocuSign um, all the best and success in the world. Oh, thank you, Robin. Really great meeting you, and uh, thank you for your time, and um, just appreciate what you're also doing on your end to amplify these stories, because I think each story that's shared just shows you the potential of 
um, you know, how diverse of a population we have as women. And the more shared story shared, you see more possibilities, right? Which is well, what yeah, you're and sharing. Thank you. And it's the it is the role models. I'm going to throw one more last question at you, and that is, what would you say to the young woman in the room that's thinking about future career in terms of thinking about tech, a role in tech? Oh, I would say first, be curious, be curious, be open minded, learn, um, and be bold take risks and you're capable you're more capable than you might even realize I think that's wonderful I think that's what I'd say to my younger self too <laughs> I think <laughs> we you. have the experience to know that so yes yeah. <laughs> fantastic thank you Innie yep thank you